I am Brian Helpage with Team Aquascape and we are starting a new project. The unique thing about this project is the homeowner wanted to do some of the excavation himself. I said dig down the first 12 inches and we'll take it from there and he looks like he did it really really well. Basically, we're not gonna be able to finish that job this year. And we ran into a little bit of a snafu. In the town where we are putting this project in, we are required to have a contractor's license for the town. So awesome, back here in, in uh, Palos. This is a project that we started late last year. Weather and some permitting issues actually uh, stopped us from finishing this whole thing. Chris and I snuck out here a couple weeks ago just to see what everything looked like. Uh, last time both of us were here, there was a lot of snow on the ground. We got uh, about three inches of snow and it was hard to see, but things are looking really good. Chris is over here working on the waterfall. Chris and Micho actually snuck out here yesterday and started kind of buttoning up this waterfall. And let me turn this around and show you how cool it's to look and then we'll go over what our plans are for the rest of the day I'll tell you this it is awesome to be back outside this looks really really cool i can already picture the water coming out of there that little fall is going to be great what size pump do we have on here a 9 pl holy cow <laughs> that'll be ripping out of there yeah that'll rip out of there um that's why we've got we've got it set so far away from the biofalls mm -hmm. we wanted to give it have this stream look we might put a rock right in the middle of that biofall snout just to kind of split it to give it some interest then a sheet style waterfall then it's going to split around this rock here and i'd like to get some water over here and then it'll dance around here which will be great for view from the house yep also what i'm excited about is the change in elevations of the waterfalls we're also going to get i don't know if you can see it but get water kind of coming down through here ripping back around too so so the 9 pl you know a bigger pump that's going to push a little bit more than 7,000 gallons per hour allows us to comfortably do a split like that if we didn't have such a big pump you'd get a trickle of water on this side and a trickle of water on this side up here water is going to be gushing through that because that's a little bit maybe 13 inches wide 14 yeah. inches wide there and pushing that much water through there that'll be thick thick water because of that thick water that's why we set these frame rocks back here high enough behind it it's a little high but we wanted to cover the biofalls yeah. too but we wanted to compensate for the frame rocks which are the two rocks on the outside of this spill rock because that thickness of that water is going to be so high and we need to get that liner up extra high that's because awesome of the thickness of the water so it's gonna look great looks like you're just kind of buttoning up some edges over here getting this all finished off yep. uh, we've got some retaining wall work that's got to carry off that way right. we've got to get this wall here basically as high as the lip of the biofalls mm -hmm. we can slope it a little bit but we want to avoid that volcanic look so the flatter that dirt can come from there out this way the better all of this will look i think our goal today is really drain power wash the pond get it all clean done finish off some edge work over here by the snorkel vault we've got some edge work to do over in here it looks like set a few boulders in here get some stuff in here if we could get this pond running by the end of the day it'd be a big victory the design of this you can see these stepping stones that i just walked past these will obviously lead back up towards the patio someplace the stepping stones invite them to not only interact with the pond but lead them to a future fire pit that's going to sit over in here so a pretty big retaining wall is going to go in a fence comes back in through here and we'll have a garden pathway that just kind of meanders around takes you to the fire pit big boulder wall along here and then back over to the bridge slash stepping stones leading to the house. Hey Brian, your phone's ringing. <laughs> That's unusual. 
<laughs> so today's Thursday. If we can get this thing running today, we'd be in good shape. Friday, work on the retaining wall. And then I would imagine Monday, we'll sneak back out here and uh, clean things up. If we had our whole crew, we'd be easily done tomorrow. But uh, it's Chris and I for a little bit here today. We got Micho and Juan showing up a little bit later. I'm off tomorrow doing consultations. Designing ponds near you. <laughs> oh yeah! So we finished uh, this area up over here. We were able to actually find a couple logs to kind of dress up that space over in there, which looks really cool. We've got the skimmer box hidden with one of the logs that kind of comes out that way so you don't see the opening. Just giving it a final rinse through, you can see how much cleaner it looks than it did this morning. We've got our big wetland filter over here. We're actually borrowing water from the wetland filter because that water was clean from last winter and you can see Udi using that pressure to actually uh, clean it out. If you notice the pressure coming out of there, it's because Creative Udi shoved a big rock in there. Instead of his thumb, he shoved a, a little rock in there. Micho's finishing up this side. We got that big boulder placed. We're able to switch all of the lights out to colored lights. So we've got colored lights going in here. We've got uh, some overflow stuff done over there. One of the big things, if you remember with this job, is we had a, a under pond drain that runs along here and then back out that way. And that's what that is there. So when we get this hydrostatic pressure, instead of the water pushing the liner up, the water goes in through that pipe and then can come out that way. And if you notice, it's actually working because nothing's bubbled up. Last year, this was bubbling like crazy. So that all that water right now is climbing up into that pipe over there and then it'll eventually get tied into a big drain that goes out that way. Got Chris over here setting some more boulders. Get this done. And then I think we're gonna move to this area here and then just start working our way out. We can also start cleaning out this stream and getting gravel in here. I like working outside. <laughs> really, really loving this pond. I love the shape of it. I love the combination of the moss rock with the granite boulders. It just looks really nice. This place is gonna be a true masterpiece when it's totally finished. Can't wait to show you guys. What is up everybody? It is an exciting day here with Chris from Team Aquascape and you all out there in YouTube land. Thanks for following along. You can see the beautiful pond behind me from this project. It turned out spectacular. I mean, I say incredible a lot. This one ups it even a notch with spectacular. Heavy rain last night, so it is a sloppy, muddy mess. However, I want to turn the camera around and show you just how cool this pond is. Please disregard all the mud around the outside. That's going to be taken care of here shortly by the homeowners and they're going to finish up the landscaping and maybe at some point we'll give you a follow-up video with it completely planted and completely transformed. But until then, I'm going to show you where we finish things and give you a tutorial on how this pond actually works. And I can't wait to show you the stream and waterfalls because it turned out amazing. I am standing right in front of our wetland filter area. This is our one of our biological filters, but this is our bio filter on steroids, folks. It is 12 aqua blocks and it's about an eight by 10 footprint. You can see my snorkel down there. And then the centipede runs that way and then my plumbing comes in right there. You can just barely see the top of that three inch elbow shooting down into the ground. This will be very heavily planted, especially on this back edge over here, but it's intended to look like an extension of the pond. You can see we've got multiple large flat rocks, destination style boulders. We got one here, we've got a few over there. We've got one back over here. We really wanted to make this water feature extremely approachable and we wanted to mix in the granite and moss rock to give it a really unique natural look. You can see our waterfalls dumping into the pond from the stream. We've got a nice meandering stream with excellent movement. It twists and turns and kind of careens back and forth. Walking behind the red bud now, you can see this really neat cove area back in through here. We are three feet deep down at the deepest section. The water's a little murky because I, as I said, there was um, a heavy rainfall last night and with all the exposed soil, some of the clay particulates ended up in the pond kind of murking things up. What I wanted to point out is, I hope you can pick that up on video, but see that top water agitation right there? That is one of our two pond power heads. That's nestled in between some of the boulders along this wall right down and through here. So you can see it pushing that water. It's gonna help with that top water movement coming across from the bog, but just pushing water across the surface. You can see it's doing an excellent job of doing that. And it's also eliminating any dead zones back in here. The nice thing about those pond power heads is that you can manipulate the direction of the flow or the push of water from those pond power heads. So really, really cool design. And they're a great way 
for us and you guys out there to add circulation in what otherwise may be a dead zone in a pond or increase that top water push that you're looking for to help push debris into a specific direction. One thing that I wanted to show you guys that maybe you saw earlier in the video is we did a snorkel centipede setup in the pond. Now here's the snorkel cap. What this is, this is holding a pump that feeds the bog filter. And then there's a centipede that runs right around there. It goes down to about uh, two and a half foot depth. It's covered up by cobbles, which is gonna provide that pre-filter, but that is drawing from the bottom and then pushing that water all the way down through here and in through that three inch discharge line going down into the snorkel centipede in the bottom of the wetland filter. And then it upflows up through the aqua box and then pushes back across the surface. We've got the skimmer located right back there, which you can see underneath that fake rock lid. The reason we have the snorkel centipede set up with our bottom suction and our skimmer in one area is so that we're drawing all that water into one area. We don't have this weird cross current or dead zone if we were to put them on opposite sides of the pond or further away from each other. So really, really cool area. You can see we foraged some nice pieces of wood to help disguise this area and create this nice backwater uh, feel. You can see we've got our fake skimmer lid over here like I said. We've got our 9PL pump in here which is feeding the waterfall which I can't wait to show you but I wanted to pan up and just give you an overall look of the pond. Now like I said there's one power head located over there. The other one you can see it just up right at the corner of that rock there. You can see the top water agitation is pushing all that water back along this area and kind of spinning it around, pushing whatever crap would fall in here back over towards the skimmer and into the skimmer basket and then very easily removed. One neat thing about this is, is that power head actually has a suction line running all the way along here and it starts about there. So you're sucking water from there through a six inch perforated hose back over to here and then it's being pushed out through the power head right there. So really, really neat. Flat destination boulders all over the place for you to kind of come stand on enjoy the vistas and the different viewing angles of this beautiful water feature really really cool how you have this interactive pathway so you can see there's the waterfall dumping into the pond itself being fed by this really beautiful stream that twists and turns we've got an excellent really elegant sheet style waterfalls there it's only about a six inch drop but it's just beautiful it looks very very natural we've got these very cool and unique Pennsylvania Fieldstone steppers. We decided not to do a solid bridge element in through here, just to help add with the whimsical nature of it. You can see we've got this really cool movement in the stream. And without further ado, I wanna show you the waterfalls. Remember folks, this is a 9PL pump in through here, and you can just see the amount of water that a 9PL creates. It's about 72 to 7,500 gallons per hour. Because of the 9PL and the volume of water that's being pushed by it, it allowed me to really spread this waterfall out and be able to have nice thick water more than just, you know, maybe a foot wide or so. So it's really important for you guys and girls out there as you're building water features to understand the flow rate of the pump and what you're capable of doing with the waterfalls itself. So I just wanted to point out how much is actually going on with this waterfall when we're only using basically seven rocks all together but we'll just we'll call it five big frame rocks but notice how we are changing the width of the waterfall going skinny and thick and then splitting it around this center rock and then this bottom waterfall on this right hand side is changing direction and it's got this really great movement in through here so I just wanted to show you what you can do with a very minimal amount of rock used so get creative with it understand the properties of the rock fitting them together making sure that the joints match up really nicely. You can really create a lot with very, very little. And it's also important to know the size of your pump and the volume of water that you're doing so that what you can get away with artistically by going with a more simpler approach. So guys, that's gonna wrap it for this episode of Team Aquascape. Thanks for tuning in. It's been a long process. We're glad to put this project in the books. You can see the customer has already started softscaping behind me, filling in all of the landscape areas that Brian had planned out with them. Thanks for watching the latest episode. Make sure you hit the subscribe button button if you haven't already click the little bell so you're notified when all of our new content comes out on every Tuesday and Thursday of every week till next time we'll talk to you later bye